I mean, I saw this guy beat up some guy, called himself a paratrooper. He beat, beat him over the head with a fucking magazine <laughs> at six in the morning at a, in front of a coffee shop in Venice. I mean, it was like, you know, our, our, our best friend got stabbed in the stomach and, you, you know, we're delivering him to my little brother who's a doctor in the middle of the night. Like, this is all happening while I'm going and doing movies with Roman Polanski and, Roman Polanski and, and Oliver Stone. I mean, like, crazy shit was going on and we were just going a million miles an hour. And then on July 3rd, 2009, uh, you know, we used to have this, we used to do this party in Venice where I lived up on my roof. I'm, I'm really good friends with that guy, Charlie Tuna and guys from Fishbone. There's this great band called House of Vibe and they play Wednesdays at Harvell's. It's sort of like the local who's who of the, the West Side hip hop scene. And they would play on my roof every July 4th. And it was a crazy part. Everybody eating mushrooms and just having the time of their life. And the night before that party, I just needed to get away for a second. I was walking my dogs. I'm walking down the street. And uh, I see there's like a house party, these you know these assholes in this party. And there's an old couple playing the didgeridoo, right? And uh, they, 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 they're sitting there, and it, you know, a man and his wife. And I see this one guy, and I just fucking lock onto this guy. And there's just something about it where I, where I just couldn't take my eyes off him. He was with this group. All, everybody's all fucked up. But he was like the ringleader. And he goes up to this old woman who's playing the didgeridoo right next to her husband. And he puts the didgeridoo on his dick. So it looks like she's blowing his, you know. There's something about that that just fucking pissed me off so much. And I'm just looking at him. And then all of a sudden, he locked onto my dog. And it was crazy because I'm like 20 yards away from him. And he, with this dog right here, he calls boss over. And, you know, boss runs over to him, right? And and he's holding her up, so I called boss back, and he held on to boss. And there's just something about my dogs and and my family and my yes. friends that I just like I can't I can't take that shit, man. And it was a different time in my life, so I went over and I grabbed boss from him, and 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 the guy goes, hey man, get your hands off my dogs, and he's got all his friends right there, right? And I just looked at him, and I, you know, it, it, I, I I still just had a real coldness in my fucking heart, man. And I grabbed him and I started walking away. I said, come on, boss. And he said, I told you not to, you know, grab my dog. And he and his buddy started following me pushes me in the back and I turned around and boom and I just hit him and uh you know at that point in my life man we I, we were just we we're getting street fights all the time man right all the, the street, fucking time he was right up the street I hit this guy he gets knocked out standing up crashes his head on the pavement he's fucking out his buddies jump me I'm trying to fight them off me they get on top of me all of a sudden Kerrigan comes run so I don't know how the fuck this guy heard about it but Kerrigan oh, comes and oh. bam and like he's trying to rip dudes off and then the police come and it's this huge yeah. mess man and when the thing gets all broken up there's one guy you know lying in a pool of blood and they say who did this and and it's their party so me and Kerrigan are handcuffed on the side of the uh, on the side of the road and they're all pouring on me pouring beers on our heads cuz it's all their people you know and anyways long story long story fucking long they ended up taking me away because the guy wasn't waking up. They put him in an ambulance. He still hadn't woken up 45 minutes later. And I'd been in trouble my whole life. And, and, and you know, I'm down there now. And, um, you know, I had a career, man. I was a series regular on a few TV shows. I'd done, you know, 12, 15 movies. And I'm sitting there on this bench in the Pacific Division. And, you know, all of a sudden, I remember being locked up when I was a kid because... I'm in a situation where I'm, I'm handcuffed to this bench and you know, they got the wall right there so you can't even move to one side or the other and I had to piss so fucking bad. I couldn't believe I'm at a situation where when I piss, I can't go piss. I gotta ask somebody permission, he's not gonna let me. And these cops are on me. Hey, if he doesn't wake up, that's it, motherfucker. You know how they are, just in my ear. If you don't wake up, you're done. And I knew, man, right there <coughs> on that bench, I said to myself, look, man, this is gonna go one of two ways. But if he doesn't wake up, I'm going down and I'm going through that room that way. And I'm done, man. I'm done with family. I'm done with friends. And I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the devil. I know what I know what it means to be locked up in California, and you ain't getting out of that clean. And I'm ready to be that guy. I'm ready. And it was it was a scary feeling because it wasn't, I wasn't scared. It was peaceful. I'm ready to be that guy. But, Lord, if you can just wake this guy up, like if you can just change this, I am done, man. I'm done with the bullshit. I'm done with the drinking. I'm done with the messing around. I'm gonna commit to my lady. I'm gonna commit to my work. I, I, I'm, I'm going to be about making a family and I'm going to trim all the fat off my life. And I know I should have learned this lesson, but I need to learn it. But, but I've learned it now. If you just give me the shot and look, sure enough, this guy ended up waking up. He ended up, uh, he ended up suing me for a whole shit ton of money, you know, cause he, I, I had just done uh, night at the museum too which they fucking put my face on the poster. So my poster's all over California. He saw it. He goes, that's the guy that knocked me out. So now he's suing me for $2 million, saying he's got vertigo and PTSD and all this bullshit. And uh, point being, man, right after that is when I was faced with this situation where I, where I had an audition for Walking Dead. And 
July 3rd, 2010, one year later, I was on set for Walking Dead. And I got married right after the first year of Walking Dead. And that's really when my life changed in every single way. And I started working different, started behaving different. My, and and I, I can tell you, man, I've really, you know, something Sean says all the time, man. I think the, what, the, the biggest gift you can hope for in, in, in this world, I don't mean to be, you know, preachy, man, but I think it's peace, man. If you can find some peace, some peace of mind. I got nothing left to prove to anybody anymore, man. I, I, I have real peace. I'm in love with my wife. I gotta, I, I'm in love with my kids. I'm in love with my career. And I get the best friends in the world. And there's no part of me anymore that needs to go out and be be the guy. There's no part where, I, where if I see some sort of brand of injustice, I need to insert myself and say, hey, man, don't you fuck with that motherfucker. Now, don't get me wrong. You're not going to mess with my wife. You're not going to mess with my kids or my friends. But I'm not going around with this this... You know, I think we're we're confused, man. I think we're confused that we feel like as men we need to go prove ourselves all the time and we need to assert ourselves. And to me, honestly, there's there's actually nothing less manly, I think, than 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 being the loudest voice in the room. And and I and what I what I came to figure out, you know, literally a year later on, on July third, two thousand ten, I remember I ended up writing a letter. I never sent it to the guy, I just I wrote a letter to that guy that I knocked out. And I remember thinking and realizing that that was me that, and not to get too trippy, but that was me that I knocked out. That was the old version of me, man. I saw shit in him. I saw behavior in him. I saw a brashness and a loudness and a disrespect in him that I'd seen in the younger version of myself. And I was done with that guy, man. I was done with that guy. And, uh, you know, that, that event ended up, that event ended up really changing my life right there along with Walking Dead. And I think you don't have, I don't have one without the other. It's so weird how a negative turned into a positive. If you can you know? if you can make it, man. I still remember being in a jail cell with a fucking Armani suit on with handcuffs on and they just gave me six years and I'm like, that's it. That's it. This is it. This is it. And you I went to sleep. You know, I just after I got sentenced, I just laid my head down and fell asleep for three or four hours. I was done. And it took me more years to get peace. But you're absolutely right. There's nothing better than a peaceful man ever since i shot that netflix thing in june everything changed for me mm. especially comedy wise i'm a better mm. comic because i'm at peace now i really don't give a fuck that i bombed or whatever the fuck they think it's what i do today you know That's it. and i go home at night it's so weird how did you have a was there a transition period when peace came into your life that you figured something was missing have you ever had that look man i think anytime you give up anything the first thing that happens is there's a big ass hole, you know, and when I, when I sort of gave up kind of being crazy and going out and doing all these things and, you know, I, I, I didn't know what the fuck to do with myself. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know if I could act. I didn't know if, unless I was the guy sort of bleeding out and being the craziest. I mean, you got, you can ask Kerrigan. I mean, I was the guy, man. I, you know, I, I was the guy who was doing the craziest <clears throat> shit. And anything that people were down for, I was, hey, man, let's go. And when I gave that up, you know, the, the, the case of my, my, my deal was I, I, I sort of was under this, I was under this, this deal with the prosecutor's office that I had three years where if I was, I didn't need to be charged and I need, didn't need to be convicted. But if I was arrested in association with any kind of violence, it was a mandatory 10 years in LA County. And those three years, man, right after that, I just cold Turkey stopped just stopped everything. And I didn't know what the, I, I didn't, I was really scared, man. I didn't believe in myself. I didn't know who the fuck I was if I wasn't, you know, being that guy. Um, but you know, then, you know, that's, that, that's life, man. That's growing up. It's like, you start to get something new in, you don't know what the fuck it is, but you don't run from that. You run towards it. And I think it's weakness and cowardice to run back to what's familiar to you all the time. And, and I think especially, and if you're going to be an artist, you got to run to what scares you. You got to run to what you don't do well. You got to run, uh, else you're just doing the same shit over and over again. And fuck you, man. Like, you got this opportunity. You got this opportunity to be a professional fucking artist. Like, challenge yourself. I fucking grow. love it. Though. You know? Yeah, fuck like, yeah. Now my yeah. dick gets hard. That's like, it, man. I go up there. You know, again, I always knew, you know, and it's dumb. I always knew from watching those stupid YouTube tapes that Leonard Skinner had something in their head. And in the documentary, they said it, our goal was to blow the band behind us out. Yeah. And that's what my goal is now. That's as it. gentlemanly as I could do, sure. is if I'm at the comedy store, I'm destroying that thing. I don't care what comes out of my mouth no more. Yeah. I'm not politically correct at all no more. It doesn't matter to me. 
I'm going to take you into my world. And that's what stand-up is, taking you into my world, you know. Not to get too much into that.